Hey guys. So this last couple of weeks I've had an intermittent no crank, no start circumstance happening on my vehicle and I've come to the decision it's a bad starter motor. I thought I'd take this opportunity to put together a seminar describing the thought processes that go on when you work up this kind of a problem and how I ultimately came to the conclusion that it was a bad starter motor. I'm going to go through some battery testing and then a voltage drop test and then we're going to replace the starter and see if the problem is fixed. So when I face this kind of problem, the very first thing that I think of is the battery. If the starter motor won't turn over, you need to have that battery working properly. And so the first thing I did is I did a battery test. This is a carbon pile load tester. It goes up to about 500 amps, and so it's very well powered. Now, uh, what I did first is I checked out the battery, and as it turned out, my battery failed. And the battery was only two and a half years old, and so I actually took it back to the store I bought it, they double checked the testing and found that indeed the battery was bad and so they replaced it for me and so this is the new battery and we're going to do this just as a demonstration so um, I've got my battery tester hooked up and so I'm going to increase the load now this uh, is rated at 875 cold cranking amps and so usually to test it you do about half that so what's that for um, 30 some odd and so we're going to do it at about 430 amps for 15 seconds. And this device is set up with a beeper that tells me when 15 seconds is done. And so we'll see what the voltage is here after that 15 seconds of 430 amps. So here we go. I'm going to crank the load up. 430. And wait. See, I've got my safety glasses on. Nine point five. So this battery with 15 seconds of a load test at 425 amps tests out fine. 9.5 volts, which is perfectly fine at the temperature we're at. And remember, you've got to do it at the correct temperature because this is highly dependent on temperature. So for the next part of this, I want to see if I'm actually getting voltage down to my starter. The starter has two posts. The first post is the so-called B post, which uh, transmits power directly from the positive port of the battery all the way down to the starter. And the second one is the trigger post. And right now we're going to check the trigger post. So what I've done is I've hooked up the black cable of my multimeter to that trigger post under the starter. I can't show you that because it's so tucked in away. But I'll show you it once we get the starter motor off. And the second is hooked up to ground. And so you can see that I've got no potential here just at rest. So I'm going to walk over and I'm going to start the engine and we'll see if I get 12 volts here. It should be just a transient thing as the engine starts. So here's what we know. We know the battery is good and we know we're getting trigger voltage down to that trigger post on the starter motor. But what we don't know yet is whether or not the wires could be in some way damaged or frayed. The connections between the battery and the starter motor. And that's a more delicate question than you might think. You can't just use a test meter or a multimeter to do this. You need to do a fancy test called a voltage drop test. And that's a dynamic test whereby you put the battery and starter under load and you look for voltage drop on the way to the battery and starter. You, do, uh, you test the negative side, you test the positive side and see how it works. To start that test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hot wire the starter motor. I'm going to connect the positive lead of the battery to the battery post on the starter. And the reason I'm going to do that is twofold. First, I want to bypass the ignition switch and the ignition relay and the starter relay so that I'm purely looking at the starter motor. If my problem is solved on bypassing that, then obviously I know where my problem is. And then secondly, this allows me to more easily turn the starter on and off and do this voltage drop test. So we'll do that first. So what I've done is I've hooked up a trigger. This is a simple switch. It goes from the positive side of the battery down to the trigger side on the um, starter motor. And so when I press this button, the starter motor is going to turn over. Now, I'm going to do a voltage drop test on the positive side and the negative side. And I've got the positive side hooked up already. And on the positive side, the red um, 
connector for the multimeter is goes down to the B plus side of the post on the starter motor, and then I'm going to touch this to the positive side here. And not unexpectedly, there's no voltage drop at rest. But voltage drop test is a dynamic test. I need to have the starter motor running before I can test it. And so I'm going to crank over the starter motor, and we're going to look to see what the voltage drop difference is between the, uh, here at the battery and right at the B plus side of the post. Here we go. Now, did you just see that? My starter failed just at that instant. And that's the problem I'm facing. Now, that tells me two things. One is that having bypassed the ignition and my neutral safety switch, my problem is not at that site. The starter failed just at the instant I was turning it over. So that's further evidence to say that I've got a starter motor problem. So let's try this again, see if it happens again. So 0.27, so my voltage drop from the, the battery cable to the B plus side of the uh, starter is 0.27 volts. I'm told that as a maximum you want no more than 0.7, so we're well below that at 0.27 voltage drop. So we don't have enough voltage drop on the positive side. Now let's check the negative side. So now we're going to do the negative side. Now what I've done is I've switched the red clamp for my multimeter from the B plus side of the uh, starter motor over to the frame of the starter motor, which should be contiguous with the frame of the engine. So I'm going to check my voltage drop from the post of the battery right through to the um, starter motor. Let's see what that gives you. It's 0, 0.0 at the moment. Zero point two zero. So I'm told that anything less than 0 0.25 is acceptable. And so we're well within specs on that one as well. Now the nice thing about doing a voltage drop in this way is that you've done it right to the uh, target uh, device. And so what that means is if my screening tests are fine, I don't need to do any uh, subtests. So for instance, supposing my voltage drop were too high on the negative side, I start to dissect it out. I'd, for instance, I'd test this here. I'd compare uh, voltage drop from here to here to see if I can find the area that's the problem. But having done my voltage drop right from the beginning to the end and having achieved uh, results that are within specs, I don't need to do anything more. My voltage drop test is fine. My wiring is fine. Okay, so let's summarize what we've done here. I've uh, had a problem with an intermittent no start with my starter motor. I checked out the battery and the back battery checked out fine. Then I checked out the voltage drop test and the wires are all fine. And then as an added bonus, while I was doing the voltage drop test and while I had the starter ignition bypassed, I had the starter actually fail on the bench just right when I was doing it. And so that's added information that says that this is a starter motor problem rather than a neutral safety switch problem or some other ignition issue. So now it's time to swap it out. This is the easiest part. There are two bolts, one here and one here, and two wires, the trigger post and the B plus post, which is always positive. And so first effort, you always undo the uh, battery and so that you're not going to get zapped when you take this off undo the wires and undo the two bolts. Now the two bolts, the bottom one is easy and the top one requires a wrench that'll get you there. This is a 16 millimeter. It uh, gets me right to the right position that I want to be at and so I've thrown some PB blaster on those bolts and I'm going to slip them off now, put in my new starter motor and we'll be done. Now some purists would say you should do a bench test on this starter motor before I put it on. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not going to do that. I'm confident it's going to work but if it doesn't work, we'll take it off and try it again. Say, so I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like. I'd be interested in any comments or thoughts you have. Thanks for your time.